This is the talk show that takes a no-holds-barred approach to politics, where truth and integrity are the standard and the Constitution honored. From Renaissance Studios, this is Champion News Talk Radio. Good morning, and welcome to another great edition of Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net, your choice for the conservative voice. We'd like to wish you a very happy new year and a very special new year it is. It's 2012, and 2012 is the year for a conservative victory. This is Carol Parisi, and today our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have the privilege to have Peter Breen with us as our guest from the Thomas More Society and also a Village of Lombard, Lombard trustee. Uh, good morning, Jack. Happy New Year. How are you on this 2012? Well, uh, looking forward to uh, a uh, challenging and hopefully victorious year. Uh, uh, after all, we live in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to see any more of these uh, little uh, things that are supposed to be some reform of education, but as been in the past year, uh, we're just useless. Uh, you have the most miserable amount of failure that anybody could want as an opportunity to do better. We are the most bankrupt state of the 50. Oh, Obama says 57. Sorry, that's <laughs> Arabs. Uh, and uh, we also uh, are... are uh, uh, the uh, most crooked state, crooked and deep, deep in depth. Uh, we need major changes, and the biggest changes we need is in the crazy regulations uh, that are uh, turning everything mm -hmm. in, in business and living uh, into a socialism by the 1,000 cuts. And the other thing is our education system, if you just took a third of the cost out of it, which wouldn't be enough, because it is wasteful, stem to stern. It has been destroyed by the IEA and the other teacher unions. It is the biggest mess in the world, and it's ruined the, 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 uh, found the money, uh, the pensions have bankrupted the state already. The, the teacher unions have ruined the political system. They are the biggest 800-pound gorilla that there is down in Springfield. They run those guys. Madigan, you're a pussy cat. You listen to the union and you carry the mail for them. We got to get rid of those two things. There's a lot to do this year. A lot to and do. And if it isn't done, we're going to lose the opportunity wow. to ever do it. We must. Because these guys are on the march to total social socialism. Yep. Yep, bureaucratic socialism, and yes, we need the conservative. Am I, and the am I some kind of a, of, a, of a right wing nut uh, no, proposing not. something <laughs> that isn't so? Uh, just because I've been saying it for well more than half a century, uh, there was a newspaper article about me recently uh, uh, that said. Uh, Maybe the old bastard has been right all along. <laughs> Can we say that on Sunday morning radio? Uh, yeah. Peter. It was it's, New Year's, Year's it's New Year's Day. Everybody gets a little <laughs> attitude on New Year's Day. Yeah, well, let's see if everybody's even up. And Happy New Year Thank you for waking you. up. Happy New Year to Jack. I don't mind That's being Michael called. That's Michael Brown. Michael. Yes, I sit 20 feet from away from you every single week, and you never introduce me. I never me, introduce Michael Brown. But it's New Year's Day, and so we're turning in. Your New Year's resolution is to start introducing me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Brown, the voice behind the microphone and does all the magic with I was us. always happy about a new year until Jack started bringing up all the reasons that we have a lot of work to do this year. Mike well, here uh, has done a fantastic thing. Uh, this setup is all his creation, and uh, it, this is a uh, four-camera setup. This is a sophisticated studio and entirely due to the great knowledge of a fellow who also happens to be a very sensible conservative. Well, with uh, the, Mike Brown, uh, uh, thank you, you want sir. a New Year's baby? You've been at this a while. <laughs> yeah, well, Michael. With the conversations that we have, it it, it really deserved this type of uh, oh, of, yeah. of platform. Well, it's a, it's a great uh, message that we're bringing out. People ought to see us as well as hear us. Yeah, go and, to our YouTube's channel. What's the YouTube channel, Michael? Uh, it's uh, Champion News Online. 
Champion News Online. You could view all of these and also listen to podcasts. But we have or, Peter. Or it can be viewed on championnews.net. Uh, that's our Dot website. Net. That's yep. a, a profit and loss uh, business. And uh, it, uh, so, therefore, it can speak out on the people in politics, the money in politics, and all the rest of the grimy scene. We can say as much stuff as would the uh, Chicago Tribune if they had the sense to do it. Under the First Amendment, right? Yep. Correct. <laughs> Peter, right. Um, you're with the Thomas More Society, and you're <clears throat> also a Village of Lombard trustee. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Sure. Tell us a little bit about the Thomas More Society, what you do. And I know before we came on air this morning, you and Jack had some phenomenal conversations. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, it, it was interesting we mentioned the First Amendment because most of the litigation that we do, we're practicing attorneys. We go to court all across the country. It's a Thomas More Society, the it's a national Society. organization. Right, but we okay. are headquartered in Chicago. Oh. And we are, we're, so we're local here, even though we do cases around the country. Uh, we focus on the First Amendment. So a lot of uh, defending of activists. In our cases, usually defending folks who are activists on pro-life issues or pro-family issues. But at the same time, we also will help Tea Party groups at times. Uh, but really, it, 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 the, the reason that we were founded was to be a national center, mm -hmm. but we've been very active in Illinois as of late. Mm -hmm. Just a lot because of opportunity here. <laughs> this yeah. Is, yeah, this that's is a target-rich sure. environment. <laughs> yeah, and, and so that's been we, we, we've been active against uh, you know Lisa Madigan and Pat Quinn and you know defending the Catholic charities. That's from, music to Jack's ears, I'm sure. Right. Well, well and, and, and you know, so, so defending a, a free market system that we've mm -hmm. got here in Illinois, mm -hmm. and then uh, defending the Parental Notice of Abortion Act, which mm -hmm. was passed. 16 years ago, has never gone into effect. Uh, we're in the midst of that, and we've got lots of other issues too, out in Rockford and Aurora and other places, along with around the country. Uh, so that, the Thomas More Society really serves the interests of life, family, religious liberty, but really focusing on that First Amendment. What I'm hearing here are value-based attorneys of integrity. Well, see, this is a good. You judge thing the for integrity because I, I, I've always been told, you know, you, if a guy says he's the honest guy, then run. You know, <laughs> yourself, so but no, I mean, yeah. it seems like the values that your organization and it's it, it, it's an, it, it's attorneys, it's it's a law yeah. society. These yeah. the values show integrity and Americanism. Sure. Well, and, and there are plenty of groups of lawyers around the country, and sometimes they'll call themselves St. Thomas More Societies, and they. They may put on a service once a year, and they may have a brunch or what mm -hmm, have you. Mm -hmm. We're attorneys who practice law in the courts, suing Planned Parenthood and the ACLU, and then defending those who are being attacked by the government. I mean, whether it's Eric Holder or Lisa Madigan or some local municipality somewhere in, in North Carolina, uh, where we've been recently. What's the, um, the most current thing you're working on that our listeners need to hear about? Well, uh, right now, the Illinois Supreme Court just took the appeal in, on the issue of the Illinois Parental Notice of Abortion Act. Mm -hmm. So you will see in 2012 argument and likely a decision on whether our state, the only state in the Midwest without any sort of parental involvement in, in a child's abortion decision, you will see whether our state can impose this regulation that says if you've got a 14-year-old who's going to go have an abortion, that their parents should be told first. That's I good. mean, this is a huge issue of, <clears throat> of parental rights, which is something we've seen you know, attacked in this state as of late mm -hmm, uh, with the mm -hmm. homeschool regulations. And it's something that 80% of Illinoisans support, but because of the entrenched interests in this state, who are backed by the ACLU and who, mm -hmm. you know, there's that, that back and forth flow of money and influence, this law never went into effect. And so finally, we could get it into effect. Wasn't, wasn't this passed in the legislature? 1995, signed by pro-choice Governor Jim Edgar at the time, it never went into effect. People don't realize uh, uh, how uh, detrimental Edgar had, was in his service in office. Uh, he looked like he was posing for holy pictures, but there are a lot of issues that, and the general voters don't realize that an endorsement from uh, Edgar on present politics is not a good thing. Uh, when he was still uh, governor, uh, tell you, the Republican legislature was totally disgusted with the man uh, for his for the many stands that he made uh, against good Republican principles. Well, and I, I, there were actually, as I understand it, in '95 there were two bills. Uh, uh, one was a little tougher bill. One was a weaker bill. 
And because of the governor's pro-choice stand, he wanted the weaker bill. And so that's what the legislature passed. They sent it to him. He did sign it. Uh, so even though it was weaker, it was better than nothing. And uh, it's better than what we've had since, which is 5,000 <clears throat> girls every year being subjected to abortions in this state without the parents knowing. Yeah. Um, it know, just isn't right. You know what? Sure. It, first of all, as a parent, I am a parent to a son, but my son is exactly 14 years old. And anything he does for school, I have to sign off on and give him permission. A medical procedure like an abortion, let alone there's a life behind that and a grandchild, right. why wouldn't a parent have, have the obligation to sign that? Sure. Well, this is like this, that Partial Birth Abortion Act. Mm. You, know, you, you take an issue where you know 80% of people plus oh, are yeah. in favor, and you just hammer on it to show that the other side is not really looking for a reasonable solution. No. They are, uh, what they're doing is just trying to push an agenda that is opposite any sense. There are ideologues that are uh, way extreme. They're, that's where the extremity is. We're going to hear about more extremities when we come back.